Stop handing out paraphernalia. Hand out Kratom. You'll see how many lives you save. Well, welcome back to another video in the Kratom series. My name is Adam. I go by Coach Hard Gains with a Z. You can find me on Instagram at Coach Hard Gains. You can find me on YouTube, Coach Hard Gains, and here at Healing Together. Now, Kratom has become a very popular topic on this channel, and this is a good thing. We need more transparent communication about Kratom. Because there's so many people on YouTube specifically that are putting out the wrong information, false information, and very actually dangerous information. So I'm making these videos so that you can come here and hopefully have all the information you need to make the decision yourself whether Kratom is right for you long term or for a specific use. Now a huge question that keeps coming to my inbox in many different ways, I've gotten it at least 30 times just since the last video I made. It's coming in so many different forms. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight just today, <laughs> just today. And all of these people are asking the same thing. And the most recent one, I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, but Chris uh, Mernick says, Adam, can you go through the steps that will lessen the withdrawal? Can you scale down? I mean, again, there's dozens more of that topic. So briefly, I want to give you some input and some advice that has helped me lessen the Kratom withdrawals. Now, Kratom withdrawal is very real. The Kratom paws are unique. That is post-acute withdrawal symptoms. The symptoms that come through Kratom are very different. This is why I come to the conclusions that I have come about Kratom. Now, this is why I've come to the conclusions I have about Kratom. And while many people are insisting that it is either an opioid or an opiate, I believe that it is neither. It is something very unique and different from both of those. While it may operate on the opioid receptors and it may attach to the mu receptors, I get it. I understand that. Fine. But just because those are its effects, that does not mean that is what it can be categorized as. Okay? Its effects are not its category. So today, it's very important that we actually talk about certain ways to lessen, if not lower, post-acute withdrawal symptoms from Kratom. When either taking a break weaning down or quitting. This is very important, so stick around and we're gonna get into a good one here. Now, one of the quickest ways to become addicted to Kratom is through shots and extracts. I've made a video about that here. Go take a look at that one. I want you to avoid them at all costs. If you're taking them now, stop. Just stop. They only cause addiction and they're dangerous. And frankly, I do believe that the Kratom industry is doing us, as the consumer, a disservice by making these so strong that they know that those consumers who are utilizing Kratom for other withdrawal, coming off of another substance, they're gonna be reliant on these extracts because they're so strong. So get off now, okay? Now I'm hoping and assuming that you've gotten off your extracts, you're back on powder or you're back on capsules, most likely powder because it just works better, hits differently, and it's better on your gut anyway. You don't have all these gelatin capsules piling up in your system, especially when you're taking 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 a day. Now, one of the best methods to approach a break or quitting Kratom is being as inconsistent as possible with your dosing and with your strains. You wanna take different manufacturers, different strains, different doses throughout the day, each day, every week. Because the more consistent your schedule is, the more reliant your body becomes on that schedule. And that's what creates the jonesing. The jonesing for the next hit, the jonesing for the next dose. The body becomes accustomed to it. And we know, three and a half hours, that's my max. Four hours later, I'm getting cold sweats, I'm getting creepy crawlies, I'm getting restless legs, I'm freaking out. So three and a half hours is my max. Now I need more Kratom. If you, begin to rotate the brand, rotate the strain, rotate the dosage. Take half a teaspoon here, one tablespoon there. If you're at that realm of dosage, if you're not, don't go that far. Vary it up is what I'm saying. And this is much easier if you have a food scale so that you can be measuring your grams per dose and grams per day. Remember, I've also encouraged you all to be tracking your usage and consumption with a journal. This will help greatly in preparing to take your break or to quit. So now you know your normal schedule, your normal reg regimen. Break it. Get off it. I mean, just go gangbusters doing weird things. Sometimes you also want to throw in other supplements 
between your kratom, especially utilizing gabapentin, as I've discussed, and GABA along with L-tryptophan. That's the natural alternative to gabapentin. Now what those supplements naturally and synthetically do is calm and soothe the central nervous system. The creepy crawlies and the restless leg syndrome that, that encompasses our entire body and makes us feel like we're, we're bugging out, okay? I know that most of you have felt that with one form of another of your DOC, your drug of choice. That's by far the worst experience, okay? When you're really in that, it's a nightmare. It's terrible. And I also want to address something quickly. I'm seeing a lot of videos on YouTube and TikTok surfacing of people bugging out, of people tripping. And it's not on the heavy stuff anymore. It's on the opioids, the pills, the fentanyl, meth, subs, heroin. They're tripping and they're just bugging out and they're scratching all over and they're bugging out and they're rubbing and, and people are making fun of them. So if you're one of those people that watches those videos for entertainment, I want to f***ing stop. Because it's not entertaining. It's not entertaining for the person in that moment either. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know why they're going through that, why they use. You don't know and it's not your business. Don't record videos and post them on social media because you see them tripping. That's not funny. So hopefully I've made my point on that. Now moving on. You're going to utilize some gabapentin. I do 300 milligrams morning, afternoon, and night. Sometimes a little bit more if the withdrawal symptoms are increasing. And at times when I was at 80 grams of Kratom a day, the withdrawal was a nightmare. It was worse than coming off of Oxy, coming off of Dilaudid, coming off of everything. The Kratom withdrawals are worse. And the reason I say that is because I feel Kratom affect my body more completely than anything else. No matter what, Kratom gets into so much more departments of the body, of the chemistry. This is what I found, not just with myself, but with many of my clients reporting the same to me. So gabapentin and even, even GABA. You can get GABA from Amazon. You can get GABA from your drugstore. GABA with L-tryptophan. Those will also help significantly with the, the nerve pause. You're going to start utilizing those supplements as you start to taper down. Because if you're utilizing gabapentin, you'll be able to take significantly less kratom and feel okay. You won't feel Jones in for it. It really is amazing how it works. But be careful. Gabapentin should only be used short term. It comes with a host of other issues. Issues that I have experienced personally myself, such as short term memory loss, severe memory loss lethargy to a dangerous point, and some other things that I don't want to address here, I want to wait till I make a video on gabapentin, but stay tuned for that. Now, GABA and L-tryptophan is the natural alternative to that. It doesn't work quite as well, but it will help significantly, especially if you take it before bed. It will help calm your body. Now, the other things you want to be taking on a daily basis as you're preparing to either wean down, taper down, or quit are your basic vitamins. You do want to be taking a good multivitamin with zinc, magnesium, B-complex, D. You want to be taking a standalone vitamin C, at least one gram a day. I take three grams of vitamin C a day. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. This is not medical information. Use it at your own risk and consult your own physician. I utilize three grams of vitamin C every day. If I start to feel like I'm coming down with something or I've been around other people who are sick, I take five grams of vitamin C a day. Knock on wood. I rarely ever get sick and I do attribute part of that to the fact that I take a lot of vitamin C I take a standalone zinc magnesium folic acid I take p5p to lower prolactin buildup which kratom causes extreme amounts of remember guys also I'm a bodybuilding coach so I really focus on the hormonal aspect of things I look at people's blood work almost every day and I see how what they're using affects their blood work, their hormone panel, etc. P5P is an activated form of B6. Now what that does is it inhibits the breast tissue to build up with prolactin. And then that can cause actually prolactin-based gyno, gynecomastia, which most doctors just assume that it's estrogen-based inside the breast tissue for most men. But it's not. So men doing TRT and HRT, they come to me with blood work and they're like, I'm a mess. I got these man boobs. Well, I look at their blood work, their estrogen is normal, but yet their doctor gave them five different estrogen blockers. Now they're depressed, anti-social, suicidal, full of anxiety, full of panic. 
but we look at their prolactin, and their prolactin is sky high. If you're taking Kratom every day, that will significantly increase your prolactin buildup, and that could be why you have soft breast tissue. Is that enough to keep me off Kratom? Not yet, but almost. We'll get into that in a later video. So P5P, again. Now, if you are consuming Kratom daily, in the amounts that we discuss in these videos, which most of you are, you need to be taking care of your liver and kidneys. This is very important. I will be making a separate video on liver and kidney health, but I take NAC, NAC, and Tudka. I use that for liver and kidney health. You wanna make sure that your kidneys are filtering properly because you're taking in a lot of plant matter that's building up, not always digesting through the gut properly. Okay, the digestive system suffers greatly. Most of our opioid receptors are found in the gut. So it gets affected greatly by Kratom. Now, many people are also reporting to me a host of hormonal issues with daily consumption of Kratom, such as hypothyroidism, hypogonadism, and even a lot of women are coming to me with problems with libido and sexual function. This is real. So we're gonna get into that in another video. So I'm taking all my vitamins and I'm overlapping. If you're not taking them yet, start taking them now. Then I'm gonna start tapering down my Kratom consumption. That can only be determined by you. As I've outlined before, I typically lower one gram each dose per day. So I will do Monday, 10 grams per dose three times a day. Tuesday, nine grams three times a day. Wednesday, eight grams three times a day. Thursday, seven grams three times a day. Does that make sense? I can follow that pattern and come out at the end of it ready to quit or take a break. Now, yes, I am still on Kratom. I've taken breaks and I have quit and gotten back on. Because if you've been following along with my journey, you know already that I am in massive amounts of pain every day. And that is no fucking exaggeration. I am in so much pain every day. And it wears you down and it's exhausting. So Kratom is still one of my main pain management options. Until I have a better system for replacement that functions as well, I'm gonna keep cycling on and off Kratom. But you are now tapering down and you're getting ready to either take your break or to quit, okay? Sometimes this takes a month, three months, six months. Sometimes this takes a year. If you are preparing to quit, and you've had a long road of opioids and now you've been on Kratom for years, or you're coming off of Suboxone or Buprenorphine, which we're going to be discussing in great length on its own video. Buprenorphine needs to be addressed for many of you, but you're tapering down in the way that you need, okay? Now, I always advise if you are getting ready to take a break or quit, please do it in the summertime, do it in the spring, do it when the weather is consistent or the weather is beautiful and it uplifts you and it helps provide natural dopamine and serotonin levels, and the vitamin D is, is, is in mass array, and the problem is, is when you quit during the cold, you get cold chills. Another thing I want you to utilize when you're taking a break or quitting is ice therapy, cold baths, cold showers, cold plunges. This makes a huge difference because it encourages the body to create more dopamine, to create new dopamine, especially if you have been abusing opioids, for years, your brain has now started to delete opioid receptors in a way to self-preserve. So after you've been abusing these substances for a long time, the brain deletes opioid receptors. So there are less receptors available for those opioids to attach to. So the problem is, is whereas 80 milligrams of oxy used to feel good, now that's an overdose level. So your brain senses that you're in a dangerous place and it sees you slamming these opioid receptors constantly, overly saturating. So the brain looks at, a, at, a, at this as danger, okay? So then the brain starts deleting opioid receptors so there's less potential for overdose through abuse. But then what happens when you then slam 100 milligrams because you don't feel it anymore? Well, that stops your heart. Most people that overdose from drug abuse overdose from the heart slowing down to an unhealthy place. Many people, it's through mixing the wrong substances. The hardest part about being a coach is that I do become very emotionally attached 
to everybody I work with. And they all become friends. And I have been working with ex-convicts, people coming out of jail, trying to keep them from going back by teaching them trades and skills and construction and tree work and landscaping and trying to hone in on their passions and their purpose. But that's not an easy thing to keep yourself separated from. So now you're getting ready to taper and quit. The worst part that almost everybody relays to me is the depression that comes on, the anxiety, the exhaustion, mental and physical exhaustion after you've quit your drug. Coming off Kratom is no different. Many people have reported that cold turkey and Kratom is much easier because you snap back to reality. Instead of tapering off slowly, you just slowly become numb and stay numb. And many people have reported that that has taken them longer to come out of than quitting cold turkey, having a more immediate change and shift, and being able to feel normal again. But what happens now that we've quit our drug or tapered down to such a low dose that our body is freaking out is our dopamine and serotonin levels are just plummeted. So now we have to find natural, healthy, endogenous ways to produce more dopamine, serotonin, so that we can feel good again. Another thing I want to also stress to you is pornography is very dangerous for many reasons, but if we look at it strictly from an addiction standpoint, pornography also depletes our natural feeling of dopamine. And it brings in this artificial source, so then we don't feel as engaged or present or fulfilled when making love to someone we care about. So I really encourage you to stay away from porn all the time, but especially if you are tapering or weaning or taking a break or quitting Kratom or anything else. Now, a lot of this can really be applied to any opioid, many drugs, but Kratom specifically affects the central nervous system heavily. So the more you focus on that, your CNS health, the easier it will be to get through the withdrawal. Now, benzos work very well, but I'm sure most of you already know that benzodiazepine is equally as addictive as anything else, yet comes with the worst withdrawal. The only thing that I've ever withdrawn from that was worse than Kratom was Ativan, and we'll get into that in another video. But you can utilize benzos to get you off of Kratom if you promise me that you're not going to replace your addiction to Kratom with benzos because you're going to go from one bad withdrawal to an even worse withdrawal. But again, taking your vitamins and supplements, cold therapy, and at night when you're trying to sleep but you can't because your withdrawal is keeping you up and driving you crazy, that is when a product like Calm comes in handy. That is when products with zinc, magnesium, and melatonin come in handy. I don't like melatonin, not at all, not one bit, but it does help go through withdrawal. And I've also tried most sleeping agents to get sleep because I don't sleep well as it is. I'm ADHD, I have a brain injury, I have a hyperactive mind running all the time. So these are many of the main tools that will help you get through your withdrawal, help you take your breaks, help you quit. But now what? Now that you've quit, you're gonna wanna go back on. We always do. The best substitute for a drug of choice is an addiction to dopamine. I've said this in many videos and I'm telling you again, what has proven to work for me in my practice with my clients more than anything else is goal-oriented exercise or training. Creating a goal because that reward system operates on that dopamine level. So we're replacing that exogenous dopamine from Kratom and we need to find a derivative of dopamine in our lives to stay off of the other source that we miss so much. And see, goal-oriented exercise is so important because it also helps with your health, with your heart, it helps with your mind, it helps with so many things, but it helps you sweat the toxins out. Go use the sauna. Sitting in the sauna each day does wonders for withdrawal. Just make sure you don't have a lot of your drug of choice in your system because you could pass out. A lot of these drugs slow the heart rate down to dangerous levels. And then that doesn't mix well with being in a sauna. So I don't want to make this video too long. I want you to take these main points and start to implement them. Now, if there's more that I can give you, please drop a line in the comment section and I am happy to dive deeper into any topic you want that will help you. Because the more that we can focus on helping each other, 
the more we can help others. And that is our purpose here. That's my purpose here. I know that's what you want to do and I need your help to keep Kratom legal, to keep Kratom uncontrolled, and to make Kratom available to everyone. There are people around the world who can't get Kratom. That's not okay. And now our current administration is subsidizing paraphernalia? They should be subsidizing Kratom. They should be giving out free bags of Kratom to addicts. That would save lives. Stop handing out needles and pins. Stop handing out paraphernalia. Hand out Kratom. You'll see how many lives you save. But that's not what they want, is it? They don't want to save lives. They want to control lives. This is a dangerous topic. But we need to make sure that we together are doing our job to promote the healthiest methods that keep us going, not stop us. So friends, I ask you to please share these videos with everyone you know who may benefit from them. Bring them to the channel. Invite them into our community because we truly are here healing together. All right, thank you all for watching another video. If you haven't already, like this video, subscribe to Healing Together with a 2, and subscribe to Coach Hard Gains. Thank you all for your love and support. I hope that you know that I truly and genuinely am very grateful and appreciative for every single one of you. So thank you all again. I'll catch you in the next video.